Ani Jayak, welcome back to Indigenous Food Friday. Now I know I have taken the whole summer off and I'm sorry, but it was sorely needed. So um, welcome back, I'm glad you're here. Um, I'm here because of you. So if you're watching, thank you. Um, today we're not really cooking anything, but we're harvesting and preparing. We are going to be preparing dried sumac. This is wild sumac. This is not poisonous sumac, totally different. Um, these are red berries that grow kind of perpendicular up this way. Poison sumac are white berries and they hang down underneath. So these are, this is wild sumac. Um, I use it on a lot of my dishes. Anything that you want some like lemony, citrusy flavor, I love this. And I'll go to this probably before I hit a lemon. I love it on any kind of egg dish rice cakes, you name it. Um, I love it. So you get these berries. The best time to know when to harvest is if you just squeeze the bunch and then lick your finger or smell it, you'll smell and taste the tart lemon. Um, if you don't, then it's just not ready. Leave it on the plant. Um, but it'll be really dark red like this. Now I've dried these in my dehydrator. Um, sorry, I don't have a dehydrator. I dried these in my oven on the lowest setting with the door cracked open so the air will circulate. I have an electric oven, not um, propane. Or you can use your dehydrator. Or if you're in a really dry um, climate like the Southwest, you can put it outside on a screen and dry it. Um, but you'll want to cover it with a screen so the birds don't get to it. Um, the thing that's really cool about this is there's no citric acid in it. But where it gets its tart flavor is it's called halic acid and it's on the outside of each of these berries um, so we just want that outside halic acid and then the seed is on the inside and we don't want the seed so this is how we prepare it so this is all dried now i'm just going to take these berries and just break them off of the stem and this is a little time consuming you can do this in front of the tv um, when you're listening to a podcast or even watching YouTube videos. So you just break the berries off. Again, this has all been, they've been washed and dried. And then we just squeeze. You can wear gloves if you want to. I'm not, nothing's gonna hurt you. It's not like super acidic or anything. And you're just gonna break the berries off into a separate bowl. So I'm gonna do that. And then when I come back, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I've been working on this for a little while. Say hello to my son hello. in the background. Um, anyway, you can see it's, I've done quite a bit and it's like soft and velvety to the touch. Like you could just, you can see, and they're just a rich red velvety texture. Very sensory pleasant. Anyway, so I've got a fairly big bowl ready. One thing um, you can also do is as you get down to getting the berries off, you can't get all the berries off. Um, well, you can, I guess, if you got some tweezers or something, but it gets really hard to get in there. Um, so what I do is I take off as much stem as I can and I get as much of the berries off as I can. And then I put them in like a tea jug or a big mason jar. You fill it up as full as you can. You add water and then you'll have the best lemonade you've ever had. You can add sugar to it, or I like to add honey or maple syrup. Um, but if you want sugar or stevia, works even better than you don't have the sugar added. You'll have the best lemonade ever. Um, so that's another thing you can do with sumac berries. Next step is I've got my cleaned food processor with, fitted with a steel blade. We are just going to add the berries to this because remember we just want the outside we don't want the the seed that's inside it won't hurt you to eat the seed but the seed is hard and it it doesn't really have a flavor at all um, so we're gonna fill this up about halfway and we'll just do it in batches For a little while you just want to get the skin away from the seed 
and then we'll sort it out later. I'm gonna let it go a couple more pulses. Makes your house smell so good. So here we have it. And we'll just do this in batches. Okay, so now I've got my bowl. You can use any kind of bowl. And then I've got a large sieve. I usually use this for, well, I use it for all sorts of things. But I use it um, for cheese and I'll use it for sifting stuff like this. Now, I want it kind of fine because I just want the husk to go through. Um, I don't, so I want to keep the seed out. And you can see the seed. I'll try to zoom in on here so you can see the difference of the seeds and the husks. So you can kind of see here, just doing that amount, I'm getting some of the filtered sumac in here. Now you can use your hands or you can use your pestle if you have a mortar and pestle. Just really whatever works for you. And this is another thing that's great to do, like if you're listening to your podcast or watching my YouTube videos or just your favorite YouTuber. And because it is time consuming, but it is so worth it. And then I'll also keep the dry sumac, um, either that I've already taken from the stems or on the stems. As long as it's dried, I'll put it in a airproof container and save it so that even through the winter, I can make sumac lemonade if I want, or if I run out of the sifted herb that I like to put on dishes, um, I can make more of that. So it is time consuming, but it is totally, totally worth it. I do think that using your hands is a little bit um, more, um, or less time consuming, because you can really get in there and you use more surface area to, um, to sift through the seeds. But do whatever works for you. If you want to get out a wooden spoon or another utensil, whatever works for you. If you have any tips and tricks, go ahead and drop it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear. Or if you have a favorite recipe that you use wild sumac berries for, go ahead and drop that in the comments. I'd like to know what you guys are doing um, with your sumac. Um, and then where do you forage it? Do you have it growing on your property or do you have to go hunt for it? Um, it grows all over the United States, but it really likes um, central United States for some reason, like Oklahoma, Kansas, um, but it grows everywhere. Uh, I will post some pictures of sumac so you know the, the type of plant and what to look for. Um, once you see it, you can spot it anywhere, anywhere. So it's one of my favorite things to harvest. It's a lot of fun. Um, but I also, I love it on so many dishes, so it makes me excited for the dishes I can cook with it. Okay, so now I'm left with this gorgeous amount of sifted sumac that's ready um, for seasoning. And I'll just keep it in um, a jar. This amount will last me about a year unless I give a lot of it away. Um, but about the, the amount that I started with at the beginning, I only used about half of that. The rest I just put in a storage container and I can go back and make more if I need to. Um, so that's actually quite a bit. So now you can see I'm left with this gorgeous jar of sumac, and this will last me about a year um, unless I give a lot away. Plus I have an extra bag uh, that I can process. So I love this. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. Drop it in the comments and let's continue the, the discussion. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do. I hope you have a wonderful week and join me next Friday for Indigenous Food Friday. Bama Pete. Thank you.